Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to make five different buttons, all of them made using a length of hand-woven inkle or tape. So let's get started. The simplest button that you can make um, using a piece of inkle is of course tying a knot and making a little ball button. It's a good idea when you tie your knot to take your overhand knot trying to keep everything flat. But then if you take your, don't tighten it too far. And then take the end and come around a second time and pop that through. That will give you two rows of your band and a little bit as you tighten it up. And of course, this is nice for uh, more narrow bands, but it can show off the weave quite nicely. And then you basically have a simple knot button. A toggle button is another really nice button to make with um, an inkle, and it's really quite easy. So use um, a stick, a pencil, anything really, just something that you can wrap around. So you're going to start, hold the end, here come around so you need to sort of hold the pencil and then we're going to come around and work back towards the hand okay three or four times is usually good okay now The most difficult part is to then take the working end under each of the wraps. So if we do it one at a time, we can slightly loosen up. So you see it's going back underneath. And of course you need to try to keep it flat when you're working with um, an inkle. And through again to the other side. So basically you have your tails coming either side. You can then remove that from your mandrel and start to tighten. So you need to sort of tighten almost at the same time, keeping everything lined up. Um, You can manipulate a little bit down to one end, but not by much. So if you don't want to sort of waste too much of your um, band, then you need to start closer to the end. Take your time so that you keep everything nice and neat. But what you want to do is you want to form a nice, tight knot. And that gives you a very simple toggle. You can cut the ends. Um, use a little bit of glue if you like. You could just if you sort of do them at this point and glue them, you can loosen it up a little bit to take the ends back in. But usually if you glue as close as possible to the end um, with clear drying glue and then snip it off, you should be absolutely fine. And that 
is a nice one to show off again the weave of um, that you've created. Covering a button or a button mold with um, an inkle could be as simple as covering it with fabric and laying the piece over the top for a decorative element. However, you could also make a bit of a fabric. To do this, you need to fold your um, inkle, line it up, and stitch it edge to edge, which I'm sure that many of you who make inkle bands have done for um, to make bags and purses. You can choose to just flip over, though of course if you have a definite right side, for instance with a thin tablet weave, you do need to turn it so that the right side faces all of the while. Make sure that you will have enough to cover your button and go around the edge um, for the tidiest effect. So for this particular size, I think I'll need to do it three times and you need to be able to go over the top as well, of course. So I'm just going to stitch through, let's see. Sometimes you just feel that there's a front and a back, don't you, when you weave. I know that sometimes there is, if you're tablet, using a, a fine tablet weave, but sometimes even with a straightforward inkle, you feel that there is a, a definite front and back. Now what you'll notice is I'm skimming through, I'm not going through to the front surface as I stitch. And really a smart person would have started at the other end and so on, but I'm just going to knot that off. You see, if I'd have worked that, this way, it may have been easier to go back. <laughs> And while I'm lining up, more or less, I mean, obviously, the thing about this is, is you can use little ends of your weaving. And I'm sort of more or less lining up the pattern. But if your pattern isn't even because you this is the start of your band, while you're still establishing your tension and everything, um, or if the pattern just doesn't isn't as even to be able to do this with go ahead and offset it you'll get a different look then So there is my front. I've just come through a little bit on the side there with my stitches, but that thankfully won't matter when I go and cover. So I'm going to place, let me just trim that little bit off so it doesn't get in my way. And I'm going to thread the needle again. All right, sorry about that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up and sort of fold and gather. This will be a little bulky, but we need to try to keep it as flat as, as possible, but without um, distorting the weave it, at the front as much as we can. So this is why it's better to do it around the actual button. And I'm using um, a flat disc button mold, but of course you could cover a plastic button in this way. Now 
So I'm just working a running stitch to bring it around and I'm not pulling too tight yet. Normally if you're working a, um, a fabric covered button you would pull quite tightly but I want to be able to see what's happening at the front and as at the moment and I know I'm going to have all this excess to pull up anyways. But at the moment, the thing is, is to just get it more or less secured. And start to pull that in. And now I can take it around that edge. Pull that up a bit. And bring it around. So now I can see, you see I'm pulling just a little bit too much at the sides. So we want to release that and pull more. Release that tension a little bit at the sides and just go more on the up and down. So I've got this excess and it's starting to get in my way now that I've got the basic layout. So what I need to do now, just caught some of it, is I need to trim some of this ends a little bit shorter so that I can work with them a little bit better. And this is where it starts to feel quite scary because you think, I've just cut into my band. That's why you use all of the end bits first. Trim off some of that excess and get some of that bulk down. Because if we get the bulk down, we can then start to bring the threads over at the back, which will help to hold in some of these. And cover them up a little bit of excess here I think I'll fold that across instead of cutting it and fold that across check the front the front's looking much better closed in a bit now if you see that something is separating like here it's probably because you haven't got enough stitching there so if you bring that and pull make sure you've got your stitch coming across and then to the next side and then you can pull it around so you can manipulate as you go don't worry about all these ends because we will cover them all up and make everything look lovely Okay, so that is pretty much there. Don't worry about this side here. As I say, I probably should have used uh, four strips. And as you can see, I'm just, I'm, I'm not worrying about my stitching at the back here because it will be covered up. All, all I want here is for everything to hold in place. Quite happy with that. Not too much spread. My stitches weren't super tiny, so I'm not worried that it's not absolutely perfect. So there we go. Basic covering. Now I'm going to use a contrast thread so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing with the next step. Okay, so I'm going to thread a tapestry needle. You can use um, a cool needle with pearlay cotton. 
you can use embroidery cotton you could use some of whatever you've done your weaving with as I say I want to contrast so that you can see what I'm actually doing and I'm going to fasten it into the back and come up at the side of the button the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the needle up to the edge of the button and now I'm going to come down and repeat going through the band and making a little blanket stitch on the top edge of the button so I'll do a few and then show you what I mean I hope I've chosen hope this gray is enough for you to see what's happening Okay, so it's forming a little edge just along the side there. So let me carry on with this. There we are full circle I'm just going to knock some of these a little closer to the edge now the next thing that I like to do when I'm working this edge and you don't have to this is entirely up to you is I like to take the th working thread underneath the loops created just to thicken it up make it look a little bit more um, rope like As you can see that thickens up the edge quite nicely as well so then the next thing to do is to come around so that we can cover up this back so turn the button so that the face of the button is down and now you're going to work blanket stitches through the ridge but in the opposite direction This also is a great covering for really any covered button, anything that's got a gathered up back. This will work really nicely. And so this blanket stitch worked in this way as a covering. Um, in passamentary terms is actually known as grappe. And again full circle and so continue going round and round each time going into the stitch of the previous row until the back is completely covered 
I'll go ahead and work this um, and come back to you in just a moment. As you get closer to the center, obviously you won't need so quite so many stitches. So you can decrease as you work. Um, you can either skip one, but what I like to do is come skip one, take the needle in through the next, turn it a little so that it comes in through the front of the one I skipped so that they're both on the same loop. And that's how I um, prefer to decrease. I think it just looks a little bit tidier most of the time. You'll notice that I'm also pulling across the button. This is so that I don't get too much of a build up and end up having to do all of these um, stitches that don't need doing. So I will carry on again. And so there is a completely covered bag, so all of those bits are all encased. And um, yes, you can use that type of covering for the front of a button. It's um, a very common decoration actually. And there's the front of your button. This button uh, tends to work best with a slightly wider band, not least because it's easier to handle. Um, so start out, um, I've glued the end uh, just put a little bit of glue right on the end, just so that the threads don't get in my way. So you need to fold. Much as if you were joining them as a piece of fabric, okay? But this time we're going to be a little bit more careful when we stitch. And I'm leaving excess um, just to make it easier. I don't think I need quite so much excess for you to see what's happening. Um, it's easier to trim away often than it is to try to tuck in. But if you've got a limited amount of braid, uh, you may wish to, to be a little bit more frugal in your stitching. So I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to stitch quite closely. And if your band does have a right and a wrong side, at the moment, the right side is on the inside. Just because I want to give uh, more of an invisible seam. So again, I'm not going through right through to the other side of the band. I'm going in between the layers, um, so pretty much where the weft would pass through. I'll just fasten that off and trim that. Now I'm going to trim this end and I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on there just so that again it's not getting in my way as I'm working. My glue is drying a little bit too quick. Now I'm going to turn this so that that's the front of the button, okay? Now basically what needs to happen is that 
you want to fold over the other side and make what will be a square. So you need to sort of manipulate, you need to move, fold in one, take that excess inside as part of the stuffing, fold in the other, and also take that in to form part of the stuffing. I will get <clears throat> a little stick to aid with this one. And that will encase the ends. And if you need to trim a little bit more off, obviously go right ahead. You, what you're doing is checking that the front makes a nice sort of uh, squared diamond shape. While that tucks in. So that's coming together. I think the one on the inside might be a little bit too folded too far in. So we'll just bring that out a little. And I'm going to use a pin so that I can just hold this and see that I'm happy. Because obviously as you're working so small, it's quite difficult. Now you see I've, I'm not happy with the square on that. I'm going to take that back out and I'm going to loosen that one up a bit because I think that square can be about there to look nice. So let's just pin that there so it doesn't move this time. And then fold that back in on itself. And then this one wants to come forward as well. And then we check. That's much better. You can see that it's, it's going to form a nice diamond. But I want to turn that back in on itself. Now you can sort of fold it around like so to make a nice seam there. Or you can just fold it back. And tuck it in so whichever sort of works best for you I'm gonna use some pins so that I get it so that I'm happy with the shape of this button but if you use the ends to stuff it then you get a nice humbug shape as well is a fiddly button to make but it is worth it so when you're stitching your sides work them as invisibly as you possibly can along that top edge If you fold your angles right, you manage to get everything tucked in properly, you should have quite a nice seam at the back as well.
Now at that point, just before you finished sort of working the button, if you think that, oh, well, actually, it's a little bit too floppy, I could do with a bit of extra um, padding in there. Just don't stitch up the very, very last part. So I, I think I'm going to add a little bit more. So I'm going to loosen this stitch. These last couple of stitches, just loosen them a little bit. So I can put a little bit more um, stuffing in there. I do like this particular button to be um, like a pillow, basically. Not to have a hard mold inside of it. So I'm just using some scraps of fabric. And just a little hint, if you do use scraps of fabric to stuff anything and you ever intend to wash it, best not to use something that's colored unless you know that the dye is color fast. Okay, so just pop out that end again. There we go. Now I can pull up my stitches. and finish that off. I do a little knot and then stitch right through. So at the back of the button, you could put a little loop shank and at the front of the button, just manipulate it a little to get your shape. And then you have a little pillow button. For this button, wool is probably the best choice for the center part. Um, something that will fluff up nicely, you can use any sort of wool. It just makes a nice effect if you can sort of get it nice and fluffy. So this one's really easy. I'm using um, a tapestry wool, a fine tapestry wool. What you need to do is you need to decide sort of how big you want your button to be. I'm going to be using this uh, piece of inkle. So it's quite a thin piece. Now I can choose to make a small button and therefore just have um, a single width of it or you could double it up, but I'm gonna just stick with the single. So I'm just gonna wrap around my fingers quite a few times. Just get my needle out of the way. until I'm happy that there's enough structure when I test it. And yeah, that, that feels like it'll make a nice enough um, button. I'm gonna trim off a little bit extra. And then I'm just going to wrap this around. I'm not worried about how this holds. It's just to give it a little bit of extra strength and just to hold that in like a little butterfly. And then you need to take your wrinkle. Now, this is not the size the button's going to be. We'll need to trim that off, but you, with like any pom-pom, you do need to work a little bit larger. And then it really is as simple as, Back. Let me just trim the end of this a little tidier because this is just a piece that's been floating around. And I'm going to place that along the middle. 
and I'm going to come over so that I cover that up, but that that is still effectively at what is the bottom or the side edge of the button. So I'm sure that that, that will fit nicely. Now I'm going to get needle and thread. And I'm going to stitch this to the pom-pom, or to the butterfly, it's not quite a pom-pom. This will obviously secure it. And help to keep all of the threads in place so you can sort of go quite deep into the pom-pom if you like as well and if you'll notice what i'm doing is i'm taking some of these threads on the um, woven band and just pulling them over so that they're sort of out of the way and stitching them in as well. And that will stop anything sort of escaping um, visually and looking a bit weird out of the side or a bit scruffy. Okay, so that's then going to come around. Make sure it's make sure it's as tight around that as you can get it because that will help to hold all of those threads in place. Then obviously I'm holding it so it's a little difficult for you to see, but what you need to do is stitch onto itself. So that's why you really want to have a matching thread. Any bits that might still be popping out, tuck them aside, put them into the inside there. Now what I also like to do is a few stitches right the way through. Now you, you do have to take care where you put them obviously, because you don't want to mess up any of your design. But usually you have enough give in any of these woven bands to hide a couple of stitches in there. And that just will help to stop uh, the band from slipping side to side. Now, at this juncture, you have two options. You can just fold it under, stitch it um, flat, and then stitch through the band to fix it onto your item. But because these are quite fun, and I tend to use them for things like bags, I like making a little shank as well. So that means you need to sort of measure Say, okay, well, I want the shank to be about there, so I'll need to cut about there. At this point, it can be a good idea to pop a little bit of glue. Just on the ends, just to keep them from coming away and ideally you should let this uh, dry but I'm not going to fold it in and then down on itself to make a little loop and now we'll go back to stitching and I want to stitch through part that we folded under down to the wrap around so if you can see what I'm doing on this side perhaps a little bit more easily because I want that to be stitched in and I want that to be stitched in so that a nice 
little loop shank appears but also because I want a bit of strength on this so Now hopefully that little bit of glue will hold any of those ends but you can also if you are concerned use a decorative thread going through the hole and around um, and bind this section so if you were to go like this and take it through and then underneath and go around and around you can also bind this area so you can do something that looks really really special um just depends on what how you're actually making it and what the end use is for because a lot of times you won't see any of this anyways i'm just going to knot this off then And then I'm going to st stitch that through so that I can come out somewhere else before I trim the thread off. And I'll keep that end inside, pull it up a little bit tight and snip that. So there's the basic sort of butterfly. You could use it like that um, as a button. You just need to trim that bit off but I like it to be quite a pom-pom. So for that, you basically just need to trim. I go through the loops first, because I can get a better idea of what will work size-wise. And obviously, depending on the, the uh, wool that you use, you'll have a different effect. And then you just need to sort of trim. You can trim it with a little bit of a uh, shaping. I see I'm trimming it with a little bit of an angle. There's one fluffy pom-pom toggle button. 